G'day everybody, welcome to the um, latest edition of Rob's Roundup, um, coming to you Friday before a, a long weekend. So our next council meeting is on Wednesday the 25th of October. Um, so at the start of the meeting we've got a couple of people that have um, registered to come and, um, and have a chat with us, so that's in our public participation session, so looking forward to hearing from them. And the first report we've got is our um, draft annual report. So this has been in front of us um, a couple of times now. Um, we had it last week at the finance and assurance meeting. And yeah, I think it's a, it's a normal sort of day-to-day -day process of, of council, but it was um, very comforting, I think, at that um, finance and assurance meeting. We had the auditor in the room. So the annual report from the end of the financial year, which was the end of June, is completed, audited, auditors happy, and yeah, I think we need to reflect on, um, on a little bit of comfort that that gives to us as governance that um, we're, in, we're in good shape and, and we've done everything really well and getting it done on time or in fact almost early is, um, is a really good achievement. Um, what are we carrying on from our policy discussions from the last meetings? One of the advantages of these fortnightly council meetings is we can move stuff through quite quickly. So we had at our last council meeting the um, Easter Sunday shop trading policy the draft speed management plan, the draft use of drones policy. So all those three are now um, getting through into, and two of them are getting, what about the Easter Sunday is deliberation and adoption, as is the draft use of drones and the addendum to the draft speed management plan. Um, it's going out for consultation. So we're able to move through those things quite fast. So that, that's quite good. Um, We've had a closed landfill risk assessment done and there's a report from that and this is um, quite an eye-opening kind of report. We've got 56 of these landfills all around Southland um, and they date back to previous, prior to the, the RMA of 1991, so each town would have had its own landfill back in the day. Um, some of these by today's standards weren't in the, in the best sort of placement and, and probably weren't managed as well as they could have been. So a lot of these have all been closed, but there, there's impacts from them and with the um, amount of flooding and everything that we keep having, um, some of the, there's some risks involved in some of them. So there's, there's a report there and 56 is um, quite a big number. And, and one in particular that's been quite controversial over the years is the, the one at Colic Bay. And um, I know that um, a group of concerned residents approached the community board there at um, Riverton a couple of weeks ago, so we're currently working through um, the information and, and we'll be having discussions with those residents as well to, to work out the, the plan going forward there. So there's going to it's going to be a lot of work involved in there and unfortunately it's not going to be cheap and it's going to all come into our long-term plan discussions and, and how we prioritise and I guess a lot of that's going to be on a, on a risk-based approach but um, yeah unfortunately it's a, an issue that's in front of us and just one of the many things that we need to be addressing and factoring into the um, long-term plan process that we're going through. It's quite scary stuff. Um, the next item is um, Newcastle Street and Riversdale. So this is quite an interesting one. It's um, a piece of land um, in between the main state highway and, and the parallel council road that runs alongside it. Normally these this type of land is owned by council and in the case of Riversdale it's owned by the Progress League and, and they're basically wanting to gift it to council. Um, we're paying for the mowing on it already so there's not going to be any financial cost the council and it kind of makes sense. It's land that's used by the community and um, this, this one to me makes sense to be owned by council and the community board have already endorsed that. So yeah, that's um, quite an unusual one. We've also had some money come through from the government. So they, this is called unbudgeted expenditure on the report. So it sounds like we're spending money that we um, didn't plan for, which, which we are, but it's also spending money that's not, we're spending government money, not our own money. So it's not an additional expense. Um, around cycling and scooter stands um, across the district. So I think it was about 62k worth of funding there to provide those. So again, noting it's not, not ratepayer money that's paying for it. Um, a few months ago, now we had our open spaces report come to council and there's a lot of confusion around it. So we ended up leaving the report on the table and um, we've had a, a new report come through with a lot more clarification around where this project is going to go. And a, a lot of it, I think, is going to end up naturally where it should go into the long-term plan process. So it's been a, a project that started back in 2014 and I think with some changes in, in both the staff level and the governance level across across councils, 
um, there's been a bit of confusion arise from this, so it'll be good to get some clarification there and, and some direction for the team moving forward. So that'll be um, a good discussion on that one, and yeah, it's good to have that back at the table and be good to get some closure on that. Um, we've also got the Mayor's Task Force for Jobs, so um, I've spoken about this before. This is a um, quite a cool piece of work that's done um, up and down the country, and um, I became aware of it, obviously, when I took on this role and talking to other mayors and seeing some really good, successful outcomes um, across the country. And it's basically aimed at 16 to 24-year-olds um, who aren't in any employment, education or training, so they're called, referred to as NEETs, and, and sort of targeting them and, and getting them into... Um, the workforce and, and, and employed and giving them a, a purpose in life which I think is really good and there's some great success stories up and down the country and it's a really good example of um, central government and local government working together so it's working with MSD and um, yeah there's going to be some hopefully some good outcomes there for us and I'm, I'm more than happy to get involved in that and um, there's government funding coming through for that from MSD to the tune of about um, just under $400,000 to, to help cover that, so it's not going to come at the ratepayers' expense or anything, and um, we're going to utilise um, Great South to, to carry out that work for us. Um, they, they're already doing some work in that space, and it'll be really easy for me to work with them to, to get to the outcomes that we need, so looking forward to that. Um, just a simple one next with the um, Whakamana Te Waituna Charitable Trust deed. This is, we've discussed before, so it's just cementing in the variation to that. Um, we had two councillors on it before, Julie Keese and Paul Duffy, and Paul Duffy, after many years of good work, is um, standing down, and Julie Keese is going to be the remaining councillor on there. And just talked about Great South, so we've got the Statement of Intent 23-26 to 26 and Space Operations Statement of Intent there as well, so it's, um, we'll be discussing that. And basically, Great South is a CCO, um, so it's a council-controlled organisation um, that, that a lot of councils have up and down the country. For us, it's shared between the four councils and we've got some other shareholders as well, so it's quite a complicated structure, but it um, delivers a lot of that regional um, work for us that sort of makes sense to have across all, all four areas and, and they do a really good job there and it's a quite a, a process getting four councils to agree to an agreed set of outcomes to then go through to Great South who have got their own independent skilled-based board which is a very, very useful thing to have. Um, but I've got a, um, one of my other roles in, in, the, in this job is the um, chair of the Great South Joint Shareholders Committee. So I'm currently working through that to simplify the process that we've got because it's been been very complicated. And I think for in terms of Great South and us to make it as easy as possible is definitely a, a key um, focus of mine. So we'll be discussing that. Um, We've got the management report there as well, which is um, our Chief Executive Cameron giving an update on, on what the organisation's been up to. And then each of the teams, we call them A3s, so they've got an A3 report, which is a good overview of what, what they've been up to. So across each of the different activities that we do as a council, which is quite a lot, um, so they'll give an update of, of what's keeping them awake at night, what's going well, and there's the opportunity for councillors to, to, to question, um, have some questions in there. So quite a quite a, um, a full agenda there, but it'll be a, another good day and um, some great discussion. So yeah, feel free to tune in live on YouTube or you can watch it later on as well. You don't have to watch it live. All the videos are there and yeah, look forward to um, seeing you on Wednesday. Thank you. Have a good weekend, everyone.